Now, I want to deal with something that I've seen a lot of in the comments of my videos, and it's people making the claim that God hates the sin but loves the sinner. Now, I'm not going to get into why it, that, that's wrong. Okay, it's obviously wrong. But I want to let R.C. Sproul deal with that later on in the clip. What I like to hone in on is the heretical ideology regarding the accountability of the sinner. Whoever came up with that phrase, God hates the sin and loves the sinner, was simply attempting to give the sinner a scapegoat. Because if God hates my sin and not me, the sinner, it's as if my sin is this exterior being that's outside of my control. And that erroneous belief essentially gets the sinner off the hook. If you believe this, repent, because that train of thought might send you to hell. When everyone is talking about the love of God and God loves me just as I am, how would you respond? The kingdom of God is not Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. I think there are few things more dangerous than preachers out there preaching that God loves everybody unconditionally. Because the message that is heard by the people who hear that is, there are no conditions. I can continue to live just as I'm living in full rebellion against God. And I have nothing to worry about because there aren't any conditions that I have to meet. God loves me unconditionally. I don't have to repent. I don't have to come to Jesus. I don't have to leave my life of sin. Uh, no conditions, no strings attached. God loves me just the way I am. He's glad that I turned out so nicely and so on. But there is a sense, I've written a book on the love of God and where I talk about the three ways in which theologians speak about the love of God. God's love of benevolence, where God has a good will towards everybody believers and non-believers. Beneficent love of God. God gives benefits to people whether they're believers or not believers. The rain falls on the just as well as on the unjust. But the most important consideration is the love of complacency, not the love of smugness, but what is meant by the love of complacency is the filial love that God has for the redeemed. And that love is directed first to Christ and then to all who are in Christ our elder brother. And that salvific love is not something that God has for everybody unconditionally. And sometimes we close our eyes to what the Bible says frequently about God's posture towards the impenitent. God, the Bible tells us, abhors the wicked. That's strong language. God abhors, detests, the wicked who are impenitent. And then people say, well, God loves the sinner. He just hates the sin. But he doesn't send the sin to hell. He sends the sinner there. And so this is very dangerous stuff when we tell people God loves you unconditionally.